freed me from all my sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. It's in March, but every year it kind of fluctuates around. So we're having Easter service. Come and join with us. Worship God. Just give praise and thanks for his death, for his resurrection. So come join with us for that celebration. Remember, every Sunday is Easter, too, right? Always celebrating his resurrection. Again, he used God's name in vain. See that? We have to be careful how we use God's name. Busy playing around at Gallaudet. So, you know, we had talked about that, and then I got kicked out of Gallaudet. And then I met a girl who was my wife <laughs> and stayed with her. We were together seven years, and thank God I stayed there in Minnesota. Oh, it's a cold place. It's awful. But then I got saved, and God burdened me to go to church. And then one day they were preaching, and it just hit me. It got through my mind, preach the gospel and study. I said, there's something, there's something, the sermon isn't finished, so I was waiting for the invitation time. And at the end, when he finished, I ran down to the front, and I didn't know what to say. I just wanted to follow what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to preach. So I said, okay, fine, and I surrendered my life to God. We had the invitation, and my husband went. He's not a crier, but he was crying. On, at, the, at the altar, and I thought, what is wrong? And I said, is there something wrong with me? Are you upset with me? And he said, no, God gave me a burden to go to Bible college. And I said, no, no. Why? Because he never reads. How is he going to read? Like, he reads the sports section. He reads the comics. How are you going to be okay? And he said, God will help me. And I said, no, you cannot go to Bible college. No, I'm happy with this church. I'm happy with my friends and the people we have here. We are going to stay. And for one year, I struggled to surrender. God touched my heart with that. And I surrendered to the Lord. And I said, you know what? You still want to go to Bible college? And he smiled and said, yes. Are you willing to go? And I said, yes, I'll go with you. So we went to Bible college. And then we had a meeting with the hearing pastor. He questioned me and he said, you know what, I believe that God has called you. So in my mind, God called me meant I plan to start a church. But the hearing people said, oh, no, no, no. Be under a hearing church. One church, not two church. So you have two churches in one roof, under one roof. So I was puzzled. And I thought, I have the Holy Spirit, same as the hearing pastor, so God called me to preach means I'm supposed to do it. We have ups and downs in life, of course, and we have struggles, but sometimes that's just God trying to get our attention. So we look to him and say, okay, what do you need? What do you want me to do? <coughs> I graduated. I got my bachelor's degree in the Bible. And then I moved to Washington, D.C., and I worked together with a hearing church. It took two years. I was very frustrated with the hearing pastor. He didn't understand deaf needs. And I kept offering, trying to make a deal with the hearing pastor, but he wouldn't take it. So one former missionary understood how I felt because he understood what missionaries situations are, what they go through in other countries. So he said, you know, warning, hearing pastors, they're probably not going to get it. They'll say you have a deaf ministry that goes with the hearing church and they need to go to worship with an interpreter. It's very hard for the deaf. For example, Sunday school. We have a Sunday school class, maybe 60 to 70 deaf come. And then we get ready to go to worship and they have an interpreter. You know, they would leave from the Sunday school class. They would go over to the worship service and there would maybe be 60 or 70 down to 20 because now they have to be with an interpreter. So, for example, Sunday night, 
with the hearing always that's fine but there would be only three or four deaf that came I offered to the hearing pastor why don't we have that separate and then all of a sudden it grew there was 30 people you know or more that came and they complained and they said no you have to go back so we went back and it got down again to three or four the deaf ministry group decided to rebel against them and they left and I had no choice so I joined with them and I set up a deaf church but <laughs> that deaf group didn't do right either because it was in rebellion it wasn't the right way they should have asked for blessings so it got messed up and there was a lot of problems so I resigned from that old church and I left and I started this church here I've known him as pastor since 1986 so he's wonderful when he was a new pastor so he had strong ASL and I didn't understand it first so through the years you know I've I know him as my second family here this church is wonderful it has a wonderful ministry and I have the opportunity for us to be involved in serving God so it's really wonderful